Randy Orton is That's here me. on yeah, the man. Sam Roberts show. Welcome. Thanks for having me. The Viper. That's me. Though you look a lot more calm right now. Oh, I'm calm all the time, man. You're able, not all the time. Well, most of the time. Most of the most time. Of the time. Is that, have you mellowed out? You're, you're a guy, you're an interesting guy because you've been with WWE for what, 11 years now? Yeah, I, well, I signed 13 years ago, been on TV almost 11. But you're only 30, 33. 33. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're a veteran, but you're starting. Your, your age, there are guys that are starting right in now. WWE around that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, even older than me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Does that make it for a weird dynamic? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's weird because, like, like Sheamus, mm -hmm. for instance, you know, he's older than I am. Mm -hmm. uh, not by much, but, uh, you know, he didn't start here, I think it's three or four years ago. And um, when you come in and you're 30 and you're a young guy, it's hard to call you a kid, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was always a young guy, and everyone, hey, kid, hey, kid. That's just kind of what, what what you call the young guys, you know. But it's you know, how do you call a thirty two year old guy? Hey, kid, you know. But yeah, so it, it it does make it a little weird back there. But to be a veteran and to be thirty three, that's that's weird too. I would imagine. Yeah. And you started. You had <coughs> when you started, they were bringing in guys like you and Cena and Batista and yep. a bunch of guys sure. who weren't doing indies. Right. Like these are you guys were not wrestlers before you started. Before you got signed, mm -hmm. are there? Because I, I, I was thinking before, when I was thinking about your career, I was thinking you must have gotten a lot of people upset because you didn't have to come up through the indies. But then I was like, well, all the main guys that came up about the same time as you didn't go through the indies. Yeah, well, you know, like in OVW, we would, you know, we 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 paid our dues the best we could. Yeah, we would uh, we would run that territory where. You know, we were working. We, we were having shows in front of people, but, you know, they, they were free shows or they were very cheap shows, mm -hmm. you know, or like our Sunday show might have, you know, 10 people attend, but you're getting experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, if you can work a crowd of 10 people, you can work a crowd of 10,000 easy. You know what I mean? It's tougher to do a smaller crowd. Oh, much, yeah. much, especially doing what we do. Because, like, for me, you know, the louder the people get, like last night I keep telling people about Hartford, Connecticut is a good a good example because they were just so energetic and so loud. When they're like that, you know, we can run faster, jump higher. You know, we're just, you know, we become more superhuman. And I you're think. not feeling anything. Yeah, it's right, all adrenaline. Right, yeah. right, exactly. So in front of 10 people, even if they're all just into it 100%, you're not going to have that. You know what I mean? You yeah. got to make that up. You got to find the emotion somewhere else. But when they're when they're screaming like they were last night, it's no thing for, you know, to flip it in the gear and to go crazy, you know, and grab him, grab him, pull him out for a double DDT. Ah, boom. And those people go crazy. And it's like, oh, you know, you just... Yeah, you you know you know it's just fucking it's crazy. You yeah, know? it's yeah. crazy, and you can just you you feel it, and they feel it, and it's just this mutual energy that everyone's getting high off of at the same time. That has to be a weird thing though, because you have to like you guys have these insane schedules where how many what four or five days a week you're working, and you're doing these, but your matches are eight ten minutes long, mm -hmm. so you got this ten minute window right where you're getting all this adrenaline out, where this is when everything is happening. Sure. A lot, and of, then a lot get... of preparation, though. Like, for me, with the injuries I've sustained, you know, my day, like, if I'm doing a live event, it starts at 7.30 on the weekend, a live event, you know, it's not televised. So mm -hmm. it's a little less stressful of a show. I want to get there about an hour before the show starts. So I have up till 6.30 that day, and, you know, I'm, I, I get get my rest, and I get my, my, my meals, and I get to the gym, then I get to the arena, and I got to start, like pre-having and artificially stabilizing my shoulder by pumping up my rotator cuff muscles so it, it won't dislocate. Does it scare you that you have to do that at 33? No, because I've seen guys, like, in our line of work, we are hurt. Yeah. We're, we're hurting. Don't think, like, oh, wrestling's fake. Like, it's not exactly fake. Tell that to Edge, who can't do it anymore because his neck was to the point where he would paralyze himself if he took one wrong move you know one wrong turn and he's a young guy too yeah he's he's my you know maybe a little older than me right maybe um so you know it, it is very dangerous but uh no it's just a necessary thing that i have to do to continue doing what i love and making good money how so you were, were 22 ish when you first started 20 20 yeah, 19, when you first got 19, signed? 19 when i signed jesus yeah it was uh january of 2000 and then uh, I got called up to do dark matches when I was 21. Uh -huh. and I did dark matches and uh, live events for probably six months. And then I started TV as a babyface. 
so those are the – but when you're like 19, 20, 21, you feel invincible. What was the first time that you got an injury that you went, oh, shit, like this is yeah. this is real. There's an expiration date here. Right, right. Well, yeah, my, my, my injuries happened quickly, like very quickly. Like after I was on TV for less than six months, I dislocated my right shoulder on Raw. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, hanging from, you know, a thread and, and God, it hurt. But that adrenaline I was talking about mixed with the uh, nervousness of being on TV, live TV for the third week in a row. You know, I had started on SmackDown, which is taped, moved to Raw like two weeks in, bam, dislocated my shoulder. So I'm thinking two weeks into Raw. Yeah. 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 Well, well, I had I had been working on SmackDown for about four months. Okay. But you were still, it was still in your first year of being oh God, on television. it was in the first six months. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I got, I'd got this push. I'd got my start. Here we go. And then boom, four months. Then I came back. And uh, my first match back, I broke my foot. and was out another four <laughs> months. So I thought at this point, and, and when I'd come back before I broke my foot, we were going to start Evolution. Me, Batista, Triple H, and Ric Flair. That and night, the, like, that was where we you were. were at a, we were at a live event in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. And... Uh, we were going to do those live events and kind of work. That was the first night I was going to hit the RKO. I was going to start using the RKO and call it the RKO. Didn't get to do that because I broke my foot and Batista tore his tricep in the same match. So we both got sent to Dr. James Andrews down in Birmingham and Evolution had to be put on hold. And but at that they point, did that. But at that point, you got to be thinking because Evolution is when you, you were with Ric Flair and Triple H and Batista. For a young guy, you're like, this is a one way ticket to being a main eventer. Right. Are you thinking, oh, my God, this isn't going to happen now? Exactly, exactly. But they were so high on Batista and I, they, they, you know, they waited. Did, did people get mad that they were so high on you from the beginning? No, because they always got guys like that. Right now, you know, they're high on the shield. You yeah. Know, they, these guys are just the next thing, you know, the greatest thing next to whatever. And, uh, you know, there'll be another guy they're high on. And Ryback they were high on. Mm-hmm. And, and, but that's good. They, they need to get high on guys. And they need to, you know, want to work with somebody or see a guy. And you know what I mean when I say be high on them. They, <laughs> Uh, you know, they, they got to want to see this guy succeed and say, you know what? He could represent the company. He could be a world heavyweight champion, you know, and, yeah. and, and give him that opportunity. So when you got to the world championship, you were 24. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Does that kind of, do you start to lose a little bit of passion somewhere around there? Because I would imagine that you get this goal, right? And you, you've made it to the WWE. You've now made it to the world title, mm-hmm. but you're 24 years old. Like, what do you? what do we strive to achieve for the next, you know, 20 years? Yeah, I see your point. But, like, at that point in my career, I'm not very confident in my abilities at this point. Nothing like I am now. So did you not think you were ready for the title? Oh, God, no. No. I was like, are you shitting me? You're Uh going to give me the world, which I'm beating who? Right. At SummerSlam, you know what I mean? Him, of all people? I'm going to, holy crap, you know, like, uh, yeah, I shit my pants. Yeah. And I had the thing for a month before they took it off me. You know, I, yeah, I wasn't ready, but, um, still the youngest world heavyweight champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just wanted the feather in your yeah. head. You don't yeah. care how yeah. long you can hold it for a night. Right, it doesn't right, matter. Right, right, right. And, you know, my, my first title run definitely wasn't my most successful. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, you learn from your mistakes, and, uh, that's what makes us good. The guys that rise, you know, the cream rises to the top. And, and what makes them good is learning from your mistakes and not making the same ones. And those can be very little, tiny, minute mistakes that the fans don't even see, but we're trying to be as perfect as we can in that storytelling, you know, experience, process. Uh, What's the weirdest thing that you've been called? Like, what's the weirdest thing that you've gone back to the locker room and somebody's yelled at you for and called it a mistake? That You're like, what? Nobody can even see this. Oh, oh, uh... Well, you'd be surprised. Like, it's it's as bad as, like, you could have a great match. Yeah. You come back into what we call the gorilla position, and then you got a couple guys there who, uh, you know, you, you look to, you know, how was it? You know, but you know. I know at this point in my career if I had a match or not, if it was good or not. Right. But when someone says, yeah, you know, you need to keep your hands up more, you know, reality-based, you mm-hmm. know, you need to keep it. And I'm thinking reality-based. So he's shooting me into a set of ropes, and I'm bouncing back at him. Mm-hmm. And you want to talk to me about reality base? Because <laughs> I'm wearing my speedos. Like, come on, this yeah. is entertainment. Uh-huh. Let's entertain. Yeah, let's not get. This isn't the UFC. Mm-hmm. This is WWE. Yeah, if it, if it was UFC, we probably wouldn't be bouncing off any ropes whatsoever. No, no. Yeah, like, if you, this you is, tried to fling me into a turnbuckle, I'd well, probably stop. Yeah, and but but like UFC, I you know I I, I watched a few of those. They, I, those guys are are hard. 
Those mm-hmm. guys are hard, but those matches can be very boring. You know, at least like we have the liberty to, we're trying to tell the best possible story and we're, we're, we have these characters and, and, you know, like everyone will find the characters that they latch onto and they like or they dislike and, you know, that keeps people wanting to tune in. Yeah, that's the thing about UFC because I've, I've watched it off and on. And I was I've been I was raised on pro wrestling, mm-hmm. so that's kind of where my mindset is at for everything. Right, right. But right. I'm watching it, and like like you say, you latch on to a UFC guy, and he's got all this hype behind him, but he loses in two seconds to somebody you've never heard of, and that's not where the story's supposed to go. Right, right. The know? good guy needs to win. Yeah. Or and if he doesn't, he needs to come back and then really kick that guy's ass. Right. Give me a reason why he's not yeah, winning. Yeah. But then he taps out again, and you're like, well, that was my guy. Yeah. What why happened? Is, yeah. Right. 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 You know, I I. I I see what you're saying. And yeah. I, I think our fans, you know, they like our product because they're entertained and they know they're going to be entertained. It's not, I might be entertained tonight. The main event might be good. I hope it goes more than a minute. You know, right. Like last time, you know, you know, you're going to get a good, good show. So you're in 12 rounds two. You're the star of 12 rounds two, which is out now on DVD and Blu-ray. Yes. When you leave wrestling to film a movie like this, and this is what you, second movie, second, uh, first one I starred in. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 But, you know, first movie really, you know, but I, I had a couple scenes in one before. Yeah. yeah. So, so when you get to now, you're at the point now in your career where you're kind of a lot more secure probably than when you were younger, sure. you know, there's, there's a spot for you. Mm-hmm. Is it nice to be able to leave and make a movie? Well, the funny thing is, I didn't leave. I um, I would uh, on my weekend, which was Tuesday and Wednesday for everyone else. Um, I'd fly and go do SmackDown, and then I'd come back just in time because we were filming on the uh, West Coast up in Vancouver. So I'd have to go through, uh, you know, immigration, get to Buffalo, New York for SmackDown. By the time I got back after filming SmackDown, not only was I tired, time zone, but we filmed at night that entire movie. <laughs> so I'm up all night. Yeah. So to be up all night shooting, then to get on a plane to fly across the country. So you're still, you're st- yes. <laughs> you're still working a regular yes. wrestler yes. schedule. I didn't take time off to, to, to do a movie. Yeah, I did both. Jesus. I had a lighter wrestling schedule because I had to do the movie. But, right. But, but I made it back each week to stay current with whatever I had going on at TV at the time. Is it difficult? Obviously, you're used to the wrestling schedule, and you understand it because you grew up with it. Your dad's a wrestler. Your grandfather was a wrestler. Is it difficult for you to start your own family and to bring someone into this world, to try to explain to them what to you has just been life forever? You know, um, with my wife, I see that a little bit. Like she, you know, like when I did the movie, like I was just saying, I was gone for eight weeks, and I, I was I was home three days in eight weeks, mm-hmm. and that was because of the movie. Then when we were done, we went straight to Europe for three weeks. So it's like I was gone, and 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 that's hard on her. My my daughter though, you know, she she'll be five, and I think she kind of she she thinks dad's pretty cool, and if she doesn't see that every day, that's okay. Because when I come home, like you know she has my undivided attention. Mm-hmm. So I make it up, you know, and if I work the nine to five, I might see her for, for dinner each night and right before she goes to bed. But, you know, I do get a couple of days here and there where I go home and I can spend all that time with her. And you have to make sure that you do that though. Morning, noon and night. Yeah. 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 And right. But I'm going to just the kind of man I am, the kind of man my mother raised me to be, I'm going to do that for my child. Yeah. Right. And I was watching your DVD and you said that having the kid kind of changed everything. Cause sure. Like you said, you start when you're 19, and I would imagine, especially because you said you were like a loser in high school. Yeah, no, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't like the guy. But now <laughs> you're one of the wrestlers that girls are actually into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how quick did that happen? Was it just party all the time when you became this celebrity wrestler? No, no, no. Um, it was never, re- well, I take that back. <laughs> there was some partying going on. Uh, but uh, like really in the last five, six years, not much. Like Yeah, I would imagine I, now. It's, I, I haven't looked for the local strip club you know, yeah. in a long time. But, but when you're 22 and you're on the road with Ric Flair, I would you're imagine. You're looking for strip clubs. <laughs> it's a different Rick, world. Rick already knows where they are and has the limo guy ready to take you there. It's in the GPS, locked and ready to go. <laughs> and he's got a table there waiting for you, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And probably, uh, never mind. I uh, I was also <laughs> yeah he's got his favorites all picked out right he knows exactly he knows where to go yeah yeah uh, a thing that I found interesting though you're talking about on the DVD about uh, being this young guy and going to the next level and people possibly being upset about it and you said that one of the lessons you learned was to watch out for people taking liberties with you literally in the ring like somebody possibly trying to injure you sure 
Does that really happen? Do people? Um, I think back in my dad's age, yeah, uh, era rather, in my grandpa's era, like my grandpa. Was, That's why your dad had to wear that cast for exactly, so long. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. They kept just breaking it. You know? Yeah. They just broke his arm every. No. Um. Yeah. My grandpa's thing. He'd always say, "Don't let him aop." -a. Like AOP was it accidentally on purpose? Mm -hmm. You know, it's an oh sorry, you know, but they would give you a belly to back uh, belly to back suplex with making a fist under your spine when they land. You know, it don't hurt their hand, but it can screw you up. There's Oof. all kinds of little tricks I think those wily veterans back in the day, you know, had to kind of stretch a guy or to hurt a guy on purpose, yeah. accidentally on purpose. Nowadays, no, you got guys like Sheamus that hit hard. But, yeah, you know, as long as. You know, it's it, it's in it's in the meat. You know, don't don't hit me here, and I'm I'm cool. Right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Keep the money maker yeah, alive. Yeah, right. Leave exactly, my face alone. Exactly. I gotta I make can, more movies. I, I remember. Do you remember Gene Snitsky? Sure, of course. Yeah. I remember Gene Snitsky. I had this big thirty-minute deal on TV. This is probably seven years ago, eight years ago, and uh, all he had to do was towards the end of the match. I'm on the floor. I don't see him coming, and he comes running down the ramp, and all he has to do is just clothesline me on the floor. Mm -hmm. All he has to do. We're going overseas the next day. I turn around looking for Snitsky because I know he's going to be there right in the face. Boom. I come up, cut just my lip. I got, it looks like I have herpes for the next two <laughs> weeks. And it's just like, you know, why? Yeah. You had one thing to fucking do. Uh-huh. Why? I you accidentally know? on purpose wanted to make you ugly. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, you know, like well, I had, you know, you're going to make me ugly like Eugene, you know? It, it's actually funny. Snitsky's been gone for the company for a while, but I saw him uh, just, uh, we were in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania the other day and I saw him. So, Gene, if you're listening, hello. How, how close have you been to losing your job? Because, like you said, the last few years, <laughs> it seems like you've mellowed out, you've been cool, you've been like, and you've been kind of that established guy but back you know there have been yeah, some yeah. you've talked about the dark days there's mm -hmm. been uh, definitely periods of time when randy orton had disappeared from television under mysterious circumstances sure how close and were you ever worried like oh my god i just blew it every time yeah every time because uh I, I think i was just a little impulsive with my decision making and i wouldn't really think how it was going to affect me or the others around me you know being a dad now mm -hmm. that was the biggest thing when i became a father is you know i I can't do this stupid shit anymore because I got a kid. Yeah. What am I gonna? What am I doing? You know what I mean. So it was pretty much just bam, stop. Then you know, and I haven't had any problems. If but, for no other reason, then you're gonna have to explain to your kid, hey, dad, remember how come you lost your job? Well, right, exactly. In the internet, you know, the internet's out there. Um, so who knows what archives are being held where of what? Of that course, you could find out later. But um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. It's life. It's life, man. You make mistakes, you pick yourself back up. But but yes, to answer your question, there was probably half a dozen times where I thought, well, that, this, is it. this is it. But you're like one of those child stars that grows up in front of people and makes all their mistakes in their 20s, and then yeah. eventually they can right. either become a legit actor right. or they don't. Well, well you know, like uh, Triple H would always tell me, like, you know, you're your own worst enemy. Because, mm -hmm. you know, everyone there, everyone at the company wanted to see me succeed you know, fight Flair and Triple H of all people in my corner. And I would imagine it would drive people insane that you, they would give you another chance and another chance and, and another that's, chance. And that's what happened. And I can't tell you how many times, you know, I had to be pulled aside and I had to have a one-on-one -on -one with Vince. Sometimes Vince and Stephanie, sometimes Vince and Stephanie and John Laurinaitis. And it was just, you know, what are you doing? You know, you can't that was a, that. that was a question that I, they must have just looked at you. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, yeah We're right. We're giving you it. We're you giving it to you. You can't talk to people like that, you yeah. know? But I think I just had some entitlement issues. And so, you know, I thought I deserved this maybe. Or like if there's a long line at the airport, well, I can go in front of everybody, give you $100, and you'll check me in because that's how it works. And you, you know get what mad I mean? if they don't. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, you, well, my money's no good? Well, yeah. No, sir, I can't take your money or I'll get fired. They're like, well, fuck you then. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, oh, I'm in trouble because I've done something completely stupid. Right, right, you right. You know, and, and so enough of that happened. And I, I, you know, man, they gave me a couple chances, that's, you know, to say the least. But it's got to feel good to know that you spent some time as a douchebag and you yeah. got the doucheness out. Yeah, no, you know what? And, and you I can was, recognize it And now. I was a douchebag. And you know what? It's funny. Um, people that I haven't seen for a while, uh, like Trish Stratus, mm -hmm. I saw her at the Hall of Fame and she looked beautiful. Man, she looked, she's the natural brunette thing works for her. Man. I agree, I don't like man. like her as a blonde, as a brunette. Gorgeous. Yeah. Anyway, 
she mentioned to me, you know, and, and like others that haven't seen me in a while, that, you know, like, wow, you've really, you've become into a mature adult. This is amazing. And then they all, it all always goes back to being a dad and having a great wife and a good family and realizing that responsibility that comes with it. Well, that's one of the reasons that made your, that your DVD was so great because every WWE DVD, John Cena is painted as this, like, cartoon, like, I love everybody. Right. And the one time you get to see... That guy was a dick. <laughs> was when he was talking about you. Yeah, when you yeah, were yeah, coming up with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. That's are, funny. Are you glad that you put your family out there on the DVD for everybody to see? No, you're not. You do not you regret it? All. I wish. I wish I'd never tweeted a picture of my daughter. Yeah. Or, but you know, I remember taking her to swim at a, a hotel um, in Miami before WrestleMania. She was probably two or three, and you know, the next day there's all these pictures online of me in my swimsuit with my daughter. Yeah. You know, and I've never posted anything like that that intimate, you know, me and her playing in the pool, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a cute picture where I'm holding her and making a funny face and she's got sunglasses on where you can't really see, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, so, you know, it's going to be out there, but putting them on the DVD was like, here's my family. And then letting my wife do the interview where she cried. Yeah. That she got some flack for that from these people on, on the internet that that's give, what I was give our wives a hard time. And yeah. that, that, that's hard for her. That's hard on her. So, yeah. you, know, you know, I wish, I wish I didn't do that. Because like our, the radio fans are just animals. Right. And so I avoid at all costs putting <laughs> yeah. any photos of my wife on, on the right. internet. I mean, they're of findable, course. I guess. Oh, yeah. But that's the, the the weirdos that I guess are upset. Like when you do, for instance, when you do a, a Google search for Sam Roberts mm -hmm. and, it, you know, you let it auto complete. Yeah. All the first things are Sam Roberts' wife, Sam Roberts' girlfriend, Sam Roberts' Jess, Sam Roberts' wedding. Sam, yeah. And it's yeah, just like, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all the, the blogs on whether or not this really happened or fantasy stories you have any of that no oh my god what kind of fantasy i don't stories? even want to talk about people it. are writing fan fictions about your personal fan, life fan fiction um well me and other wrestlers oh it's it's oh it no gets bad. yeah well there's all these sites man and people will come up to me like uh you know <laughs> I, you know check out this site this is funny blah 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 and i'll go to it and i'll <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> who I do they who do they have you paired up with? Oh, Cody Rhodes. Oh, god, oh it's always no. me and Cody. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a setting. Oh. <laughs> we're spotting each other in the gym, <laughs> and you know the sweat drips down my cheek and hits my pec, uh -huh. you know, and then drips onto his stomach. You know, it's just horrible. You know, and it's just too too much. But does it make uh, you think that you should get tights that are bigger, like yeah. something that's not so skimpy? Yeah, to... right. I, I I think I've I've uh, I. I, I made that mistake a long time ago it'd be hard to start wearing anything else now yeah i have a feeling into my 40s i will be wearing those speedos see if you can get a pair of jean shorts from john cena or something i just was cover just saying up. i don't know if it was here or earlier it's they're all running together but an interview earlier i thought you know what it would have been nice if i would have been the one to come up with the jorts the yeah jean shorts you know because that yeah that that hides it all you yeah. know you can just kind of chill not not worry right about right right adjusting yourself or <laughs> physically exposing yourself yeah to... or like like you already went to the ring at this point and you need to adjust yourself but you know you can't because you're on live television <laughs> so you try to like you know you're like how can i not get an angle where any of the twelve thousand people in this arena can see me reaching into my pants right now but when you're starting i would imagine that you're like oh yeah i'll get this outfit and chicks will like it uh... and i and then, but then you realize that there are dudes that are writing fan fictions and yeah, weirdness. Yeah, and, a lot of dudes like it too. And hey, whatever, that's cool. Yeah. You know, as like long as they that, buy the T-shirt, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> buy the movie, buy the T-shirt. Come get a ticket. You, you know, it doesn't matter. Right, right. <laughs> and Twelve rounds too. Again, yes. DVD and Blu-ray right that's now. That's right. It's, Out uh, today. It's got to be exciting for you to be on the cover of a Blu-ray that's a film. It's a movie. Yeah, no, starring in a, a film. I uh, never never thought that would happen for me. How invested are you in your storylines now? Do you still, like, do you get upset if something doesn't happen? Do you say, no, this is how we got to do it, this is how we got to do it? Or are you more like... Well, we, we, the talent, don't have the power to say, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to do. You know, there's a creative process, but a like, creative I've, team. I've spoken to Punk. Sure. And he's getting upset about creative all the time. Oh, sure, sure, You know sure. what I mean? But like, Punk likes likes to be upset about shit. He does? Oh, yeah. That's his thing, is to always kind of have a chip on his shoulder. Um, and, like, it, it's funny, because I feel like I was the original guy that always had the chip on his shoulder, but, like, mine, I think my demons were a little more deeper than his. Right. Guys never had a drink of alcohol. <laughs> How... How effed up can he really be? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, you, you know, I get it, I get it. But, you know, um, 
I, I think he's done a great job. He's obviously awesome on the stick. Yeah, you, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And and he's awesome in the ring, too. Uh, but you think he's trying to find those demons, so if Rage is the uh, demon... Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But, and I think There's no wellness the, violation for Rage. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, three strikes and you're out, right? Yeah. Um, but... Uh, what was my question there? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. We just started talking about punk, and all of a yeah, sudden, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the storylines. Like, oh. do you get like, do you get upset if it doesn't go your well, way, or well, are you thinking th there are times like the punk kick was banned, and that was that really pissed me off because that was your thing. That was my thing. Arn Anderson came up with it in the summer of '07, and I kicked Shawn Michaels in the head because Arn Anderson. He said, "You know what? How just what about his rear and back and punt punting the guy in the head? How much more vicious can you get?" And it's Especially, a low risk for you. Right, right. yeah, very low risk. Yeah. A little high risk for them because, yeah. you know, I've nailed guys with that thing. Really? Oh, yeah. I kicked the crap out of Vince in Chicago, <laughs> All-State Arena. When I kicked him, he got a concussion, whether he admits it or not. A black guy, he was bleeding. Like it was, And that's Vince's fault for everything that he's ever said. Well, no. He, he like, he's it. like, give he it to me. It. No, he's, kick me. Yeah, you better kick me. <laughs> he's a I'm, maniac. Oh, yeah, he's crazy. Yeah. He's absolutely crazy. But uh, how could he not be? Yeah. Yeah, I think he sleeps like two hours a day. You know, but he, he's a hell of a boss, and he's there for us, you know, and, and family he's, comes first. Anyone's got a birth or a wedding or something, you know, they get them home. He's obviously a crazy genius. He's made this thing work for, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. He's a, I mean, he's we're a, talking about it. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a genius. You're yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. right. You're but exactly right. but so so little things like that. But when yeah, they're no, like, you, you're in the ring with uh, Sheamus or something, are you like, okay, let's do it. Let's yeah, see where it oh, goes. Yeah, I'll get God, it over. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and most of the time that's the case. Mm -hmm. And and like I know Jericho is with the writers a lot, and that's good. You know, I, I there's a couple writers I talk to, but I'm usually kind of happy with where I'm going. Like they, they've always been real good to me, and I think yeah. that you know they put so much time and money into me. I'm at a point now in my career where. You know, if 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 they need to keep me right here, like I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna go here. Like I've already made it to where I'm not gonna, you know, in the fans' eyes, I don't think I can really, you know, hurt the character I've made. Right, you know, right, I right. I really don't think so, unless we try to. Are you happy being a, a good guy? I wouldn't say happy, but uh, I'm enjoying it the best I can. Yeah, I'd much rather be a bad guy, of course. I think everyone knows it's that. It's probably tougher to make a good guy thing work, anyway. It is. It is. You know, it's easy to kind of look at the guy going, "Come on, guys," you know, and kissing the baby. Like, look at Cena. Uh -huh. You know, I, I try not to be that kind of baby face. Yeah. You know, I don't. I can't pull it off. You know, it just comes off as nuts, you don't like babies that much, and, <laughs> and I don't like babies, right? <laughs> Uh, that's not true. But, uh, you know, I just try to be my own baby face, my own mm -hmm. kind of good guy and keep a couple of those characteristics I had as a heel. And, uh, you know, I know eventually I'll turn back. Well, Randy Orton, you're a good man, regardless of whether you want to be or not. <laughs> the movie is uh, 12 Rounds 2. It's on a DVD and Blu-ray right now. Thanks for hanging out, man. Yeah, thanks for having me.